Hello and welcome back watch lovers. Welcome to Wrist Action, the channel formerly known as the Vintage Watch Collector. Today we're going to be reviewing the original Casio G-Shock g, g light the GWX 5600C. So, let's go! The GBX100 was released in 2020 and is part of the G-Shock g, -Shock g -Light range of watches aimed at surfers. Today we're going to look at the precursor to this watch, the GWX 5600C, first introduced in 2012. The GWX 5600C is solar powered, a feature which Casio calls Tough Solar. It automatically adjusts itself according to the atomic clock, has tide and moon phase information is water resistant to 200 meters and of course has various stopwatch and alarm functions. Before we go on to look at these features and carry out a review of this watch, let's have some wrist shots and see how it looks on the wrist. The dimensions of the watch are almost 43mm in width, 49mm in length and almost 13.5mm in thickness. The band and bezel are cast in resin and the faceplate is mineral glass and it weighs about 56 grams. On the back of the watch there is a metal plate held down by four screws. The GWX5600 was released in other colorways during its production run and this includes the rare red and brown colorways. The exact model name of the one that we are reviewing today is the GWX5600C-7. The white resin of this model is finished in gloss and I believe that this was done to prevent yellowing and I can testify that this has worked as the finish is still just as bright as the day I bought it over three years ago. On the sides of the case there are four metal pushers finished in black used for the watch's operation. These look smart but they can be a little difficult to press in without the use of nails. On the straps of the watch the metal buckle also has a black finish and the keeper is made of resin. The sizing holes on the strap are varied enough to accommodate anyone with the smallest to the largest of wrists. And now let's take a look at what some people may consider to be a disadvantage of the watch. It uses a twisted pneumatic LCD display. It has the advantage of being fast to update, but it offers the worst viewing angles, which may hamper legibility. For me though, I prefer the look of negative displays, and so this is a worthwhile trade-off. Now let's take a look at some of the good points of this watch starting off with its looks. The white colorway and negative dial gives it quite a bit of wrist presence without the bulkiness that some G-Shocks can have. As far as I know it was never officially released in North America and Europe. The one I have here was released for the Japanese domestic market meaning that you have a bit of exclusivity if you're wearing one outside of Japan. The packaging for this JDM watch is also different to the ones that you get for European models, so I'll show you what you get. So this is the JDM packaging that you get with this watch and you should be aware that all the written literature is in Japanese. This is the instruction manual. This is the warranty paperwork. 
The box that the watch is presented in is different to the G-Shock tins that I'm used to. Inside is a cushion on which the watch sits and some cool Japanese tags with the watch's features. The original price of this watch when it was first released was 22,000 yen or $190. You can still buy new Japanese imports of this watch on Amazon without currently paying a premium. I'll leave my affiliate links in the description if you're interested. You can download an English version of the instruction manual from Casio's website. All you need to do is to enter the watch's module number, which is 3222. Let's take a closer look at some of the features shown on the watch's display, starting off with the Tough Solar feature. The solar panel lies just outside of the LCD screen display as shown here. The lower right of the screen gives an indication of the watch's power reserve, low, medium and high. This watch is fully charged and so it's indicating as high. And now onto the atomic timekeeping function. Pressing the lower right pusher shows the last date and time this watch was automatically synchronized with the atomic signal. You can also perform a manual receive to adjust the watch with the atomic signal by pressing down the same button for a bit longer. This process can take up to 10 minutes to complete, so I won't keep you waiting for that. Just one thing to point out is that the L1 shows the strength of the signal being received. Let's take a look at the top part of the home screen now. The tide indicator shows the tide levels where I live in Ireland at the current time. We can see that they're starting to go down. The moon indicator shows the phase of the moon, the clear part being the part that is lit up. Pressing the mode button takes us to the tide graph. It starts off by showing what the tide levels were at 6 in the morning. You can scroll through at what the tide levels will be at different times throughout the current day. Here it's telling us that the first high tide is between 8 and 9 in the morning. This screen shows the moon info and moon age. It's telling us that the moon is presently at 11.3 days into its current cycle. Pressing the mode button again takes us to the world time function. You can check the current time in 48 different cities. This next screen is the alarm function. Up to four different alarms can be set. Pressing the mode button again takes us to the stopwatch function. This screen shows us the countdown function. Press the mode button again and you're back on the home screen. This information is showing the current tide site that it's been set at. And here we see the watch illumination. This can be set at either one and a half seconds or three seconds. You can also have it set to turn on automatically. So the conclusion that I have for the original G-Shock G-Lide is that it is a unique timepiece that captures the Japanese essence of JDM G-Shock watches. It is undervalued in comparison to other JDM G-Shocks and I estimate that values will go up as time goes on. If you can live with the negative display 
it is well worth having in your collection. This has been Alm from Wrist Action and I will see you next time.